We just can't lose to our competition just because we have empty shelves. That's where Power Apps comes into play, that's where Flow comes into play, that's where Power BI comes into play, is they're helping us you know, ensure proper execution, they're helping us improve on execution, they're exposing where we're not executing. And the Power Platform allows us to try so many things at such a higher rate than we ever could before, take these best practices and the applications that really have legs and get great user adoption and, and specifically create big business value and scale them globally. My hope with more educators building their own apps is that we're able to spend more of our time in front of students teaching and more students being able to learn because everything is either efficient or automatic or we're creating or the students are creating, and that's really that highest level of learning. Hi, welcome to Build 2020 and the Power Platform for Developers section. I'm James Phillips. Today, I'm going to be joined by Julie Strauss, Charles Lamana, and Kim Manis. We're going to talk about the Power Platform and how it can help accelerate and provide agility in the application development process. And it's needed. Experts predict over 500 million new applications will be built in the next five years, more than all apps built in the last 40 years combined. Just an enormous opportunity but that opportunity obviously comes with a huge challenge. There just aren't enough developers uh, to, to sort of fuel this need for application development. We already have a huge backlog in most organizations and this opportunity to really transform business through applications and through technology requires that we arm up in some ways to, uh, to allow us to chip away at this opportunity. Now, the Power Platform, which consists of Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, was not built in a vacuum. It was built specifically to work atop Azure. And if you look across Power BI and the data tools in Azure, Power Apps, Kubernetes, Azure App Service Functions, API Management in Azure, Power Automate with Logic Apps and API Management, all of the Power Platform services have analogs in Azure and they've all been built to work together. We call it no cliffs application development. You can start with this low code, high productivity set of application development tools in the Power Platform, but you never run out of gas. You've always got the ability to go down and leverage your professional development skills to build building blocks that can then serve those who are assembling applications leveraging the Power Platform. Now, the Power Platform is not just for citizen developers. Uh, it's also used by professional developers, for all developers, as we've talked about over the course of today. Uh, and so talking about how all of these pieces fit together, how you can start with the Power Platform or with Azure and extend up or down is, is what we'll cover. Now, over three and a half million developers each month are using the Power Platform to build applications. This number is growing very quickly right now. In fact, it's accelerating. Uh, and these organizations span the globe, span industries. Over 500,000 organizations are leveraging the Power Platform today, and 97% of the Fortune 500 is represented. So this is a platform that has very quickly spanned the globe and provided a very valuable toolkit for those organizations and developers who need to build applications. Now, if there was ever a time when we needed to accelerate application development, needed to increase agility, it's now. We're in a very unusual and a very challenging time with COVID-19. Uh, we got a phone call about four weeks ago from Swedish, which is a hospital system here in the greater Seattle area, 
looking for some help building an application to help them respond to the crisis, to track personal protective equipment, to track the number of beds. And we leveraged the Power Platform along with Azure to help them very rapidly in three days get into production with an application that allowed them to respond to the crisis that, uh, that we're facing today. Now we're gonna show you over the next sort of three demo sessions how Swedish did it how they accelerated application development, leveraging Power Apps, Power Automate, AI Builder, and a number of services across Azure and Visual Studio. Uh, and to show us how they started, I'm gonna pass it over to Julie Strauss. Thank you, James. So I will walk you through the finished app that we built in collaboration with Swedish. The app is designed for frontline workers, in this case, nurses, to go and capture scarce resources like bed capacity, staffing, et cetera. So I will start to uh, report on bed capacity. And I will say this is anonymous data, so it is not data from Swedish. I will go ahead and log into the application and I will start by capturing the number of beds that I see in the intensive care unit. So I have 40 beds here. I have 22 beds in the acute care. And let's say I have five pediatric beds. Let's say that I, for example, entered 5,000. The app has built in logic that prevents me from ordering new capacity because I'm already at my fully licensed capacity. When we go into how the app was built, we will go through that in more details for how we enabled that. But if I go back and choose the five that I really have, you will see I now have the ability to actually request additional beds. So I will say next. Now it knows that I'm gonna be ordering these beds and to help the facility team locate the bed, I'm gonna enter all the details for where it's gonna be. It will be in my ICU unit on the second floor in room 14. And I can go and choose my bed type and I will choose a standard bed. Now next I'll go and describe exactly where this uh, bed should be located for installation. But what I actually want to do, I have a very efficient helper here in mixed reality. So using mixed reality, we have a three-dimensional picture image of the bed, which I can very easily maneuver around for where I want it to be located. And once I'm happy with the location, I can simply take a snapshot, there you go, and that has been captured. I have very accurately captured where the facility team should be installing the bed when it arrives, and that means an accelerated process. So I can go ahead and submit the order. With that, let's take a look at how this application was built. And I will start here uh, in VS Code. Why? Because while I could build this entire application using no code, I actually opted to collaborate with my team of pro developers. You remember that um, uh, action I had in my application where I would not be allowed to actually request beds if it was not within my capacity, what I was licensed for? Now, that was built by uh, accessing this legacy system that doesn't have any APIs out of the box. So what I've done here is I've built a custom API, I've built using an Azure function, where we're actually gonna look up the bed capacity for all of the different uh, hospital facilities and assess whether or not we are allowed to request more beds. And because of the deep integration between Azure and VS Code, I can go directly from within VS and go and create my function app. In here, I can give it a name, new bed capacity, and go ahead. So now that is uh, deploying, and I can go back into Azure where you see this API. More importantly, when I have my API deployed on my Azure function, I want to register that with Azure API management. This will really give me the opportunity to have a central location where I can govern and manage all my APIs. I can set policies and security. But more importantly, I can export this API, which will allow me to automatically generate a custom connector, which allows me to connect to this data seamlessly from within Power Apps and Power Automate. 
in that process, you get to choose the exact target environment where you want this uh, custom connector to show, and it's giving the, the name bed capacity. Now I could go ahead and export that. So once it's deployed, I can go back into my experience here, uh, the Maker Experience for Power Apps. And as I navigate over to the data sources, you will see how this custom connectors show up here natively as part of anything else and all my other data sources. So as a maker, I don't really know the difference. So let's see what it will look like when I start binding this function into my application. So here you see all the different screens that I have as part of uh, creating this application. And I'll go to my bed uh, capacity screen. So when I click this field, you can see as soon as anything in this field change, so it's on the change command, I can go ahead and I can enter this function. So what it really says is, go and look at my location, look at the licensed capacity that is allowed and see if I am within my capacity limits. That was the trigger that either allowed me to proceed or stop with ordering additional beds. So that's very simple to do. Now, you also remember the mixed reality, which looked kind of complicated, right? It was super cool. It is actually very simple. All I have to do is navigate to the batch suggestion page, and I can go and insert a code component so I can choose to view this in mixed reality. And all I have to do is drag and drop that out of the box component. All I have to go now do is bind that to the data source that hold the images of my different beds. Super cool, very simple. I didn't have to write any Python, anything, simple drag and drop. So now you've seen how this mobile application was being used as well as how it was built. So what about the nurses who may not have uh, a mobile device? Very simple, they use pen and paper. So here's the request form. It looks a lot like the application, right? You see the same fields in there. But how do we automate that? That is very simple using AI Builder, which has a form processing model that we can use to extract the key value pair. So he has have a model I have already pre-trained. And you can see how I have the key value pairs here that are ready and I can capture that. So I can kind of train this model as I go along, and now that will be taken into account. So now you're wondering, how does it get from here? Well, from pen and paper, the nurses put this in an email, and we have an automated flow that extracts any form that is being submitted via email, and it pushes that into AI Builder, where we can do automatically this extraction of the key value pairs. So that is super powerful. What is more powerful is this data is now being pushed into the exact same database where we were reporting with our mobile application. So at this point, whether you reported it using pen and paper, or whether you use the mobile app, the data ends up in that same destination. It's fully automated process. Super cool. So one more step. You remember that second step? of the application where I was actually placing the order. For that order to happen, we actually need to enter the data into my legacy order management system. That doesn't have any API, so I can't push it in there. But what I can use here is a UI automation that is available as part of the Power Automate and our robotic process automation capabilities. All I have to do is launch my recorder we will go into the user experience of this legacy application and I'll start recording my tasks. I'll say record. I will first start by email, enter the email, and I'll go and search. I'll go to request info. I'll pick the bed type, etc. I don't think I have to continue. You get the gist here. I am walking through the UI. The screen is capturing every mouse movement, any data entry. And when I go back, I should stop my recording. 
And when I go back into Power Automate, you will see how all of these navigations have actually been entered into the system. So here, for example, you see it's entering the standard bed, et cetera. So very powerful way for fully automating this entrant process. So you've seen how we very easily created a mobile application for the frontline uh, workers to capture and report on bed capacity and how we used uh, AI builder and AI models to extract key value pairs and put into the same back end, as well as how we took this UI automation and, in, and ensure that we could take these order forms and process them automatically into our legacy order management system. With that, back to you, James. Thank you, Julie. Now, a lot of times folks use the Power Platform in Azure to build applications that are used inside of an organization, but frequently you need to extend those applications out to engage the public, partners. And so we're now going to look at how Power Virtual Agents, Power Automate, uh, and our portals capability allows an organization to extend the reach of these applications. And to show how that's done, I'm going to pass it to Charles Lamana. Thank you, James. For this next demo as part of the emergency response solution, we're going to be looking at the emergency response portal, which makes it so different hospitals and healthcare providers in the health network can report information around beds, staff, and personal protective equipment back to the central reporting authority. And all of this was built just in a matter of days as opposed to a matter of weeks or months using the Power Platform together with pro dev tools like the Azure Bot Framework and T-SQL. So let's dig into it. If we look at the screen here, this is the Power Apps portal. It's a very rich experience for all the different healthcare providers where they can go drill in and report information via forms about things like bed capacity, staff availability, or equipment information. And what's great is that these forms are actually tailored to each individual healthcare provider by using profiles and, and authentication login that doesn't require them to be inside your Azure Active Directory tenant. And this experience is entirely integrated on top of the common data service. So all the information as it's entered and recorded is stored in a highly secure and highly scalable system. But what's really powerful about this portal is the Power Virtual Agent chat experience. This makes it possible so that uh, people that are interacting with the portal don't have to go through training to learn all the different forms. They can just go use a very natural chat-based experience where they can say request emergency staff. This way they don't have to learn about which screen or which UI can go do that. And just by providing my, my name and my employee ID, as well as looking up that information against the common data service, they can quickly know which healthcare provider I'm requesting assistance from, as well as uh, what basically go file it away with the right urgency. In this case, I say I need 10 individual staff to go help out at my healthcare location. I request that staff. And I can even go set the urgency as high. And this will go be recorded inside the common data service and start a business process to go get me the additional support I need. And again, all of this is very powerful and very rich, but what's unique is just how quickly you can build it using the Power Platform. So if I switch over here to the Power Apps portal authoring environment, we can see it's a great WYSIWYG experience to drag and drop on all kinds of different page components and so on. So you can very quickly get that uh, external web presence stood up on top of the common data service. But what's really special and really unique about the solution is what was done with Power Virtual Agent. We can see inside the Power Virtual Agent design surface, it's low code and easy to use just like everything else in the Power Platform. I can see how I define trigger phrases, I ask questions to the end user to gather their name and their employee ID, and I even call out the Power Automate to go look up employee information. And I'm doing this with built-in connectivity between the Power Platform. And this allows me to use over 350 data connectors inside of Power Automate so that not only can I expose information in my chatbot, but I can also take action and start my business process. And as you go look up all this information, eventually I want to go record a ticket to go get additional help to the healthcare provider. And to create that ticket, is where I need to use my coding skills. We can see this item right here, create ticket. This was actually built inside the Azure Bot framework and then registered with Power Virtual Agent. And it integrates seamlessly inside this low code design surface area. And the way I create a skill like this is the way you already know how to build Azure Bot framework skills. 
I can code this up in C sharp using the bot framework SDK, record different information and different messages, and then go take action inside of code as necessary. And then after I define this bot, I can just go register a, a manifest which describes all the different capabilities with things like creating a ticket or looking up the ticket information, all wired up very naturally. And once I have this manifest and built this bot framework skill inside of code, there's a first class experience inside a Power Virtual Agent to just go register via a manifest URL that bot framework skill. And once you're done, it shows up inside the Power Platform just like any of the out of the box capabilities. So you can very easily mix and match code first, code centric where it makes sense and go low code where uh, that also works. And if I go back to Power Virtual Agent, all of those great capabilities to take action are visible inside that low code experience, right inside of a simple pop out. I can see Power Automates, as well as those skills I just showed inside of VS Code from that Azure Bot Framework uh, implementation. Now, one of the great things about Power Virtual Agent is something called tracing. On the left-hand side of the screen, I can actually test this bot out. And as I go enter information, uh, say the same series of steps I just did on the Power App Portal, I can see how the bot brain is running and working all in real time and all very easily and naturally. And this makes it great because I can quickly debug and improve my bots without having to do a big build, publish, recompile uh, step. Uh, and I can go focus on delivering business value in a matter of days or hours as opposed to weeks or months. Um, and we can see that all of this runs through very naturally and that Azure Bot Framework skill I created is just used inside of this uh, debug experience as well. Now, the portal and Power Virtual Agent are storing all of their information inside the common data service. So if I switch over here to Power Apps, we can see all of the entities and tables I defined as part of my solution uh, for the emergency response solution. And if I say filter down to just a few of my custom uh, entities, we can see bed suggestion, hospital employee information, and tickets are all captured here in custom entities I defined with advanced security, great scalability, and great uh, customization. And most people that have used a low code backend like the common data service in the past ultimately hit up against some barriers or walls because you don't quite have the ability to go drop into it like you would a normal database. But one of our most exciting announcements from the last two weeks is the new T-SQL support for the common data service. It's now possible for developers to connect directly to the common data service, uh, see their entity, see their schema, and run T-SQL queries natively. So if I zoom in over here, we can see I've actually already connected to a common data service instance. And if I go expand the tables, we can see these are all the same entities that I just saw at the Power Apps portal. And if I even go expand one of these uh, entities or tables, it's all the same schema with the rich definitions that I would have created inside that low code experience. And this entire end to end makes it possible to have a T-SQL endpoint, but all the great common data service productivity benefits. So say if I run a query here, to look up the bed capacity across all facilities with a select statement, with where clauses, it all just works very naturally. And I can see all of the information entered as part of the census information for all those locations. But what gets me the most excited about this feature is my ability to go run advanced SQL queries. We can see here that I have the ability to write sum and count uh, based on groups on the region information. And I can even do joins across four different SQL tables, so I can build incredibly complex queries that I am used to using and building inside of SQL on top of the common data service. And that's what's so special about the Power Platform, is that where it makes sense, you can always go drop into code. And you, where it also makes sense, you can go use low code to build applications faster than ever. And if we look at this solution that we built end to end throughout this demo, this is an incredibly powerful portal built on top of the Power Apps portal's capability to engage all the different healthcare providers in the region. I then have a chat bot that I built inside a Power Virtual Agent, but also connected to Azure Bot Framework to go engage the healthcare employees inside and outside of my company. And then lastly, I was able to go look at all the information recorded in the portal inside the common data service using a T-SQL interface and SQL Server Management Studio, which I know and love as a developer. And with that, I'll kick it back over to James for the rest of the session. Thanks so much, Charles. 
Now, one of the benefits of leveraging the Power Platform, and particularly the common data service as we've seen used here in this application, is that the data is sitting in a location where you can get lots more value from it. You can analyze that data and really understand. And so we're gonna look at how Power BI, Azure Synapse, Power BI Embedded can be leveraged to gain the insight beneath these applications that are built with the Power Platform. To show us how it's done, I'm gonna pass it to Kim Manis. Thanks, James. As James said, we're gonna walk through how Power BI can get insights out of the common data service uh, with all the data coming in from the hospital emergency app. I'm starting off here in Azure Synapse Analytics. Azure Synapse is a limitless analytics portal that brings together enterprise data warehousing and big data analytics. It provides one portal for you to ingest, explore, analyze, and visualize your data. First, I'm gonna pull in the data from the hospital emergency app using the same SQL query you saw Charles use earlier. This is built on the T-SQL endpoint on top of the common data service. I can go ahead and pull this data in, get the data in the structure I want, mash it up with observational data, and do all my monitoring and orchestration tasks here. I can also go ahead and work directly with Power BI here in Azure Synapse. I can get a glimpse of what's going on with my staffing, some of the feedback coming in, occupancy rates, and supplies on hand. Now I'm gonna to jump to Power BI Desktop to do some more analysis. In the current environment, I really need to know what's going on in real time. There's lots of data coming in from the hospital emergency app and I need to keep up to date. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the page refresh feature. Using the direct query connector to the common data service, you'll see that we're streaming in data as users are submitting it into the app. This gives me a real time view without having to look in the rear view mirror. Next, I'm gonna take a look at our supplies on hand. A few months ago, Power BI introduced the concept of AI visuals. These are normal Power BI visuals with a sprinkling of intelligence. This makes it really easy for users to explore their data without needing to learn uh, complicated machine learning techniques or advanced data modeling. Here, I'm gonna start with the decomposition tree. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add the metric to analyze, in this case, supplies on hand, and I'll add a few different categories for things that might help explain it. Location, system, region, facility, acuity, and supply. Now, all I need to do is expand what's interesting to me. In this case, I wanna know about supplies. And I immediately see that mass with shields are running low. We have about two days on hand left. I can expand this further, picking the categories myself, or I can ask Power BI to select the low value that I should be looking at. And in this case, you can see that the OLTC has less than a day left of supply. I can expand this further, and I see that the Snoqualmie region is really running low, so we need to send out to some massless shields to them pretty quickly. And I can slice and dice, play around with the data and see how my different supplies are doing in my different regions. But I wanna go a step further. I wanna explore this data by asking questions of it. And in this case, I can use the natural language Q&A visual to ask questions directly. And you'll see immediately I get a number of suggestions and I can just click on them and I get a Power BI visual that I can slice and dice and cross highlight. I can also just type my questions in. So I can type available beds and I can ask for that by facility. And let's look at facilities with full capacity. And you see here, uh, the red underline means that Q&A didn't detect the phrase full capacity. It doesn't know what I mean. So I can click on this and I can ask to define that phrase so that Q&A will understand it going forward. And now I'm in the teach Q&A mode. Here, I can select the phrase full capacity and submit that. And now I can teach Q&A using Q&A. So I can say full capacity refers to occupancy percentage is greater than 80%. And I'll get a preview on the right-hand side. And I can go ahead and save this. And when I do that, you'll see that the Q&A visual is gonna update and only show me the facilities that are at full capacity. But we're gonna take it a step further with natural language. Soon, we'll be introducing a new visual called Smart Narratives. 
Oftentimes, end users are consuming reports where they don't really understand the data structure or they need an explanation of what to look at. So I can easily add a text description of what's going on using the Smart Narratives visualization. You'll see I immediately get a description, and if I zoom in on this, you can see that it describes costs and supply requests are both trending up between March 2018 and April 2020. And because this is just a text box, I can go and format it and customize it as I want. I can also write my own analysis. So I can say total costs amounted to, and instead of manually writing this number, I wanna make sure it's a dynamic value so that when the data updates, so will this number. So I can use Q&A again to write total cost amount, and I'll save this. And now in my description, the total cost amount is updated and ready to go. And the great thing about these descriptions is not only do they update when the data updates, it updates when you slice and dice within the report. So I can go ahead and select on some of my supplies and you'll see immediately the data updates, the trend analysis updates, and I get new insights written in text. This is gonna be really great for my end users to work with. Now that I've done my analysis, I'm gonna jump back to the Power Apps portal to embed my Power BI report, the same one we were working with earlier here in my application. This means that all my end users using the application can also consume that Power BI content. But I can go a step further using Power BI APIs. In this case, I added the option to export this report to a file so that I can print it or take it with me on the go. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this. And you can see here, I have my printable view of this report. If you wanna learn more about the Power BI Embedded APIs, you can check out the Power BI Embedded Playground. In this experience, you can go in and play around with samples, try the different interactivity options, run the code, and when you're ready, you can just copy it and paste it directly in your application to get started. So we just walked through how we use Power BI, Azure Synapse Analytics, and Power BI Embedded to discover insights from the hospital emergency app built upon the Common Data Service. With the drag and drop easy experiences in Power BI, it's super quick to get started and find insights. But with the Power BI embedded APIs, you can do so much more as a pro developer, customizing your application and making it your own. We're really excited to see what insights you find and what applications you build using Power BI and the Power Platform. Back to you, James. Thank you so much, Kim. And that's it. That covers the Power Platform and its integration with Azure, giving you the tools you need to accelerate and make more agile your application development process. If you want to learn more about the Power Platform, we have seven other sessions, and the URL on the screen will take you to the release notes for our 2020 release wave one features of the Power Platform. Thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to see what you build with the Power Platform and enjoy the rest of Build.